Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Dom from Lens Pro To Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So we just passed April 1st, and as I'm sure you've probably seen before, a lot of manufacturers like to make April Fool's posts like on their social media or something, as if they're announcing this new piece of crazy slash like impossible to exist type of gear, which can be really funny sometimes. And honestly, when I first saw this lens, I thought it was literally just that, like a gag. But I'm here to tell you today that this is the completely real and functional Canon 5.2 millimeter f2.8 L dual fisheye lens. And just to answer a couple of questions you might have just by looking at this lens, this lens was designed for 180 degree stereoscopic virtual reality video production. So in less nerdy terms, that basically means that these two lenses being close to each other but in slightly different positions helps give that final VR video some perceivable depth and it makes it well optimized for the standard VR headset experience after you run it through the software that Canon provides. So typically making 360 degree video or even 180 degree virtual reality video required some pretty crazy rigs. Like you probably needed two, three plus cameras, each with a wide angle lens on it. And then in post, you would have to take all those video sources, plot them out, and then stitch them together. It was a really complicated process. So what Canon is doing here is eliminating that manually stitching part of the VR workflow, which could be such a headache. And they're doing this by getting two full image circles on one full frame video source, which straight out of camera looks a little something like this, can definitely be pretty odd for sure. But with those image circles in place the way they are, now the only thing that you have to do to get this video ready for a VR headset is run it through the EOS VR utility software that Canon provides. And that's gonna transform that footage into an equi-rectangular projection, which we'll talk about in a second, but that's pretty much the whole process. Just pick up your R5 and take handheld VR video, and then after like one really easy step, that video is ready for a VR headset. And this is coming from a process that is really involved and definitely headache inducing sometimes. So there's like your quick and dirty on what this wacky lens is all about. So for this video, first I'm gonna overview the physical traits and the build of this lens because there's definitely some interesting stuff going on in here optically. And then the fun part, I'm gonna go over what I think is the best workflow for setting up the camera, the lens, and the EOS VR utility software for virtual reality production. So let's dive in. Okay, quick physical breakdown of this lens and there's an elephant in the room, all right? I'll just address it. This lens has two lenses inside of it. Again, I promise, this is a real product and not an April Fool's joke. So you can just imagine that there are like two five millimeter fisheye lenses directly side by side in here. And on the back, you can see that they each have an exit pupil. Now you may have noticed that these don't exactly line up and that's because the optics actually have to get sort of snaked around inside the lens here with the use of little angled mirrors as you can sort of see by this optical layout here. So really interesting stuff. Anyways, the lens itself is pretty small and lightweight. It's less than two inches long, but 2.7 inches wide and weighs less than half a pound. And although it has this weird like wide and flat shape, you can still grip the camera with this lens on, but your fingers don't have a ton of space there. It has a focus ring at the base here with a lot of resistance to it, and its range is in between these two dots, from close focus on the right to infinity on the left. And just to clarify, these dots have nothing to do with the left and right lenses. Like I first thought when using this, I just thought that because the dots kind of line up there, but it is just for focus. One thing I haven't really figured out yet is this port here that flips open to reveal a screw with a small flathead, and you can make adjustments to the focus of just the right lens. I say I haven't figured it out yet because I'm not really sure where this would come into play in VR shooting, but I suppose it's just nice to be able to isolate each lens in this way. The last standout thing going on build-wise are these four slots, two at the top and two at the bottom for the lens cap. 
And this cap is especially important because currently there is no protection for this lens at all. There's no clear screw-on filter for this thing. These front elements are pretty bulbous and stick out quite a bit, so I would always cover up this lens when it's not in use and never rest it down front side down like this because that will just be resting right on those front elements. All right, now that this thing is sort of like demystified in that way, now let's jump into some of the VR video workflow that we're going to be getting into today. And there are a couple of primers that you should know before you spend a day and a half troubleshooting with this lens and the software like I did. So first off, this workflow is currently only compatible with the Canon EOS R5. And this compatibility comes with the R5's 1.5.0 firmware update or later. The lens will connect to other RF mount bodies and produce the same image, but only after this message that it may not be compatible with the camera's firmware. This is because the firmware update on the R5 basically tells the camera that whenever it's recording a video clip with this lens attached to write special metadata to that video clip so that when it ends up in the EOS VR utility program, the program is able to read it. I did not know this when I took a whole night's worth of VR video on the EOS R6, which I now know I can't do anything with except show you in mosquito vision like this because the software wouldn't ingest these clips. So this is for the R5 only people. You can save yourself the headache of doing what I did if you're planning on shooting this lens on other bodies. Maybe they will release firmware updates for other bodies that add compatibility for this lens, but currently it's only for the EOS R5. And I have a feeling they did this because the R5 is the only Canon mirrorless camera with those 8K recording modes, because I think we're starting to find out now that these really high resolution video modes can actually be really helpful for this like exact type of application. So with those quick caveats out of the way, now I want to quickly run through how to get set up using this lens for VR shooting. And also I'm going to mention a couple of ways that the firmware on the R5 is going to help you in this process. Okay, so first step, acquire one Canon EOS R5 version 1.5.0 or later, and one Canon 5.2mm dual fisheye lens and attach them. Today I'm going to shoot in 8K 24p to get all that resolution crammed in there that I can, and I recommend doing the same if you can. If the camera is up to date, you will not get any error message when powering on, and that's a good indicator that the lens to body communication is successful. The firmware is also indicated by this extra display page. And even furthermore, when you hit magnify, it will magnify on just one of those images from one of those lenses. And you can toggle between which lens you're viewing through using the info button. And it tells you up here by flashing L or R. This is a good demonstration of how each of these lenses has a slightly different perspective, which is important for VR imaging. But also this function is going to make focusing a lot easier. It's very hard to see what's in focus from this view here. So you should always be magnifying focus before basically every shot. And also once in focus, toggle between left and right to make sure they are both sharp. If they are not the same or for whatever reason you would like to set them to be different focus points, now is when you can make that adjustment to the little defocuser knob here. And again, reference the other lens by toggling info. Now quick side note, you may have just noticed that the image coming from one lens shows up on the image circle on the opposite side of the screen than the lens is on. And this is actually another trick from the camera firmware, which knows to reverse those two images so it's optimized for use with a VR headset, which leaves something that would need to be done down the line in post-production done in camera. So when you make changes to the right lens, that will show up in the left image circle in camera. So that's what you should be looking for. Okay, so anyways, back to this VR video workflow. You've connected the lens to the camera with no error message, and now you're seeing the image like this. So as I just mentioned, it's really hard to see what's in focus like this. So before you shoot, you should magnify in focus 
toggle left and right lenses, make sure they're both in focus. And just for a quick reference, when this focus marker is like in the center, that's about like one foot focus or so, which is a little bit closer than like I expected. So if you were doing like a walkthrough tour of like an interior space or something like that, you would want the focus plane set a little bit further, which is going to end up being a little bit further left of center. Also, all of these sources on this lens say that the minimum focus distance is about eight inches or so. Although when I was testing it, it seemed much more like three or four inches. So not really sure how they were measuring for that distance, but I got a lot closer. Anyways, now that we know that the camera firmware is doing its thing and we know how to focus the lens by magnifying, focusing, and then referencing the other lens, that's pretty much it. They really did make this process very, very simple. So just a couple of pointers for virtual reality shooting. Keep everything nice and slow and flowy if you want the video to be easily navigated. Also, keeping the camera nice and level will look best too. All right, so now you've taken some 180 degree stereoscopic VR video from your dual fisheye lens and your Canon EOS R5, and now you're slated for some VR editing. And Canon pretty much offers you two avenues for this if you're sticking with their sort of ecosystem here. One is by downloading EOS VR Utility as a standalone program to process the footage and then drop into your editor. Or you could do everything under one roof using the EOS VR Utility plugin for Premiere. The Canon program is very basic, not much crazy complicated stuff going on. And I understand that the alternative process to this is manually stitching together two or more video sources in post, which honestly sounds nightmarish. So it really is a game changer for VR video that it is this easy now. You'll go into the software, hit file, and select your VR media by folder. It won't let you select the clip itself, it has to be the folder that contains it. And again, just to be clear, footage that does not have the special metadata from an updated R5 will not be recognized by the software. This folder does have the correct footage from an R5, so I'm going to import it. And before I can do anything, it tells me it's processing the clips a bit, and it indeed takes tens of seconds for each clip. When it finishes, you can see it automatically sets the footage into the equirectangular projection, which you can click on and off on this checkbox right here. And this is what is needed for viewing via a VR headset, like the Oculus Quest 2 or others. Furthermore, if we were doing this manually, at this point we would start to have to think about switching the sources from the left and right lenses. But we don't have to do that because the EOS R5 has already baked that into the video via that firmware, so very helpful. You'll also see that there are some quick modifications you can make to the clip here before you export, like cropping it or pan, tilt, and roll. And when it's time to export, you can choose from a few different file types and also output resolutions all the way up to 8K. And once that's exported, you're pretty much done. You now have equirectangular stereoscopic video taken in the same file type and size and everything as your regular footage. So they really did make this super simple. Now, if you want, you can just drop that footage into a timeline just like regular video and color grade it and put it into a sequence. And if you even wanted, you can do some cheesy Spy Kids stuff where like your video is regular and then like a prompt comes up at the bottom that's like, put on your VR goggles and then whoosh, it turns into a VR video. All right, that would be like really stupid, but you can sort of get the picture there. And the EOS VR utility plugin for Premiere works even easier than the standalone program. So if the plugin is installed correctly, all you're gonna do is drop one of those clips into your media bin in Premiere and it'll show up already in the equirectangular projection. And you can even right click on this media and then go over to modify, which will reveal its VR properties on this tab where you can check out all that stuff is baked into the metadata of the clip, just how you want. So anyways, that's pretty much gonna do it on this video on Canon's 5.2 millimeter F2.8 L dual fisheye lens. And just to recap, we quickly went over the build and physical traits of the weird optics going on in this lens. And also we checked out the VR workflow that sort of comes along with this lens. And also what the firmware in the R5 is doing to 
help you out in that process. So with that out of the way, for the rest of this video, I'm pretty much just going to roll some 8K dual fisheye virtual reality shots that are already prepared in the equirectangular projection for a VR headset. So you can obviously just watch as is if you want, but if you have the means to do so, now you can pop on that VR headset and get fully immersed. All right, everybody, let's get back to physical reality here now. I know you were deeply immersed in that VR video, but let's reel it on back because now it's time to wrap up this video on the Canon 5.2 millimeter f 2.8 L dual fisheye lens for VR production. So all in all, it's really neat that Canon really streamlined this type of production that was previously really involved and complicated and involved a lot of crazy rigs with multiple cameras, multiple wide angle lenses. So we've taken that process and made it a lot easier to execute from start to finish, which is really, really appreciated. And that starts with this lens's unique like dual optics design, getting both those image circles on one full frame video source. But also there's a lot of work that the camera's firmware is doing to help smooth out the edges of this process too. So all in all, very well realized system that they developed here. So if you have any questions about this dual fisheye lens, the Canon EOS R5 or the firmware update process or any single part of that virtual reality workflow that we talked about in this video, drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Also, if you happen to like this video, hit it with a thumbs up button down below to let me know you liked it. And furthermore, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. And if you are subscribed, you can actually hit that little bell button down there and that will notify you whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care and we'll see you in the next one.